Oh, hello there. Welcome to Art Time with Mr. Barry Grove. Today, we're going to talk about mark making. When making art, the use of mark making, which is the application of material to the surface that we are working on to leave behind lines, patterns, or textures, can be a important part of how we convey the mood, feeling, or emotions that we are attempting to convey in our work of art. If we look at art making through the same lens that we view language, mark making can have a similar effect on our imagery and narrative as punctuation and adjectives. It is used to enhance that which is already there. If you draw an image of a portrait of a person, making it with angry marks or light gentle marks is going to change the narrative that the viewer is picking up from said image. A red mark with a uh, heavy hand that really shows a violence behind it is going to read very differently than a red mark that is gently put down on the canvas. In all of these contexts, we are able to use mark making to push the emotional narrative of our artwork a step further than just the pure use of imagery and color allows. One of the tricky things about showing emotion through your mark making is that it really does require practice um, of letting yourself feel comfortable with projecting your emotions out through the way that you use your body. And what I mean by this is that the way we read marks is about the way that they're physically laid down. You know, a happy mark can be a little bit lighter or a little bit more ethereal than an angry mark, which is most likely going to be a little bit heavier, thicker, and aggressive. So, for example, if I was to show you this with a diagonal mark, you know, a mark going like that. So this is my standard diagonal mark does not really show an expression, it's fairly even all the way across, and so forth. If I wanted to make a happy version of it, I would kind of like let myself sit in that happy place. I would think about the mark I would make, but then when I make the mark, I would not think about what I'm doing. I would let my body control the movement. So as you can see here, it picks up, it gets a lot thinner as it's going along. You know, I'm not really feeling aggressive, I'm feeling good about myself, so I'm just kind of like letting it run off the page, I'm flipping it up. Um, it makes a thicker mark down at the base and a much thinner mark at the top. And the mark itself isn't necessarily very dark or heavy. Whereas if I was to do the same thing with a angry mark, it would read a little bit different. I'm actually going to start a little bit further because angry marks do generally tend to run a little bit longer just because of the physicality that we're putting into them. So that would read more as an angry mark. It's much heavier. You can see me physically pushing down into the paper. There are these things that whether or not you can see it on a like photograph or video is this, that in person we're able to psychologically read into the physicality of the mark making. And this is true of a lot of those different techniques. For example, if we look at scribble, a happy scribble would be kind of like this. You know, it's very loose. I'm building it up. It's really curvy. You know, it's kind of playful and, you know, I'm just kind of having fun with it. But if I was to make an angry, angry scribble, it would be much heavier. You'll notice that there's much more kind of sharp angles in it. Like there's not as much consistency in line and so forth, or there is more consistency in line. So that's a much happier type of scribble. That's a much angrier type of scribble. And it's also important to realize that I am really talking about these mark makings in terms of duality, happy and angry. And there is a much larger variation. You know, I could do a kind of scribble mark that plays in between the two um, and is maybe kind of showing some confusion. I could like build it up really heavy in a specific spot and, you know, I'm not getting to the type of angular marks that I did with the angry one because I'm not 
trying to express anger right here, but I am just running over the same area over and over again. And within that mark, you can see some marks that are coming through a little bit more clearly, um, but a lot of it is just kind of getting built up into this large mass that feels like a ball of string. And through there, you can make the argument that there is an expression of like confusion, um, anxiety, or so forth along within that. Same thing can happen in our dashes. You know, little light dashes, they read really quickly, they're light, they're much more kind of like pleasant and happy. But if I start like getting angry and letting the emotion come through, they're much more brunt. They're like even all the way through, but they're also very heavy. So these are just some of the ways that we can kind of show emotion. But like I was saying, one of the big things about this is it really does take a little bit of practice. You have to sit there and get comfortable with letting whatever you're feeling internally come through your hand. And a lot of it really just has to do with you trusting yourself to make the right type of mark. Now that we've examined some of the styles of mark making that we can use and how to try to convey different emotions or feelings within a singular mark, let's look at how we can actually use them in a drawing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do a drawing of an orange. In fact, I'm gonna do a drawing of this orange. And I'm not just gonna do one drawing of this orange, I'm gonna do two drawings of this orange. In each of the two drawings, I am going to work to convey a different emotion to you through the use of mark making that I choose. So in my first drawing, I'm going to make an orange that hopefully feels calm and peaceful. And in my second drawing, I'm going to draw an orange that hopefully feels angry and chaotic. So as always, when you are drawing, you're welcome to start off with your simple shapes. So the first thing I am going to do is just draw the very general circle of where my orange will be. I'm gonna try, start to find some of my simple shapes and kind of just find any little details that I need to correct. So because this one's gonna be a little bit more calm and peaceful, I'm gonna be using a lot of light marks. Um, and I'm gonna also not be afraid to use my eraser as it may help me as I go along. But what I want to really try to do here is avoid anything that's gonna feel like angry, aggressive, or heavy. So like we talked about in our shading exercise, I'm gonna start with some of my like really big shapes of value, do some simple blocking in, and then I will start to go into more detail from there. Our traditional shading techniques work really well for this more kind of peaceful feeling that we're trying to convey, um, as it tends to be a little bit lighter and a little bit more ethereal. You'll notice that especially because I really wanna make sure that this has a nice kind of calm feeling to it, I'm really taking my time to build this up. I'm not rushing to my darks. I'm really letting myself slowly build everything from the white of the paper, to like a mid-tone, um, and I'm not trying to push it ahead too quickly. The quicker I move through this drawing, the more likely I am to start getting little moments that are going to read kind of like angry or a little bit more aggressive. You also notice I'm using a lot of smudging to really kind of soften out even the harder moments that I want in this drawing. You know, like this orange does have like a little, a lot of little like kind of heavy, hard lines, and I do wanna make sure that I have them in there in order to show the texture of the orange, but I don't want them to be so heavy that they detract from the emotion that I'm trying to convey. You know, even when I need these really heavy marks or these really dark darks, I'm trying to put them in pretty generally and then very early on smudge them to really smooth them out so that they don't carry along any sensation of aggression to them and purely just read as shadow that is calmly sitting on a tabletop. 
And similar to a pre the previous exercise, you'll notice I'm going to go around and kind of every so often just clean up my edges to make sure that I'm not like letting any hard, hard lines or outlines show through. Once again, those hard outlines are going to pull away from my atmosphere. I want the things to feel a little bit like they're kind of glowing um, and that everything's, I want everything to feel really nice and soft and comfortable. And hard lines don't really convey that message. It's also important to acknowledge that not having hard lines doesn't mean that I can't have dark shadows and hard edges. There's a difference between having my shadow outlined and creating a value and then using an eraser to clean up the edge to still show like a clear distinction between light and shadow, but that shadow that has the heavy outline is going to feel much different than a moment of shadow that I go clean up with my eraser and still has that transition of value. Like we discussed earlier, I'm kind of going and just lightening up some of those outlines that I put. Not so much that I can't see them anymore, but just enough that they no longer feel so heavy. Even for all these little like divots, it would be really easy, and I even already did it a little bit, of just kind of taking my pencil and speckling it down. The only issue with that is I do kind of start to lose control over the narrative that I create in them. And I want to like lay these down right now and kind of like find the positioning of them, but I also want to leave them malleable enough that later on I can go and alter them to fit the mood of the rest of my drawing. And really right now what I'm doing is I'm doing exactly what we discussed in the shading exercise. I'm just looking for values, I'm building them up, and I know that especially with my smudging technique, I can go back in and I can manipulate things later on as I go along if I do end up making something, you know, a little bit harsher than what I initially wanted. Now I'm gonna go in with my eraser I can tone down some of the heavier marks that are a little too heavy for me, and I can also bring some of those little highlights back out. Never be afraid to manipulate your tools in the way that you need to in order to make the marks that you need. So like I just ripped my eraser in half so I can have this little point and make some smaller eraser marks with it. I think I'm getting close, but I do feel like I need to add a little bit more value, not enough to change the messaging or the feeling of my orange, but just enough to kind of clarify the shape and form of it. And there is my first orange. Um, hopefully it has a sensation of calmness and a more peacefulness nature to it. So let's get started on my second orange drawing. Uh, like we said, this one is going to deal with a much more kind of angry, anxious, exasperated type of feeling to it. One of the good things, or at least for me, or fun things would be another way to phrase it, is that angry drawings can often, or energetic drawings, often are quicker and a little bit more fun to do because you kind of get to just attack them. So, similar to before, I'm going to start with just my basic shape, find my shadow. I'm not going to worry as much about like the cleanliness of my lines, at least not right now, because I'm probably going to attack this thing pretty heavily and have to go back into it with a decent amount of eraser later on. So I'm really going to just kind of take my frustration out on this drawing. You know, everything that's going on, the, you know, I'm just kind of feeling the marks. I'm letting them build up more where I need them to be darker. You know, I still want to make sure that I can tell what my image is, but I really just want to 
get it out on the paper. You may notice it's a little bit harder for me to talk while making the angry one versus the peaceful one just because I'm trying to engage a little bit more with this drawing. And with the peaceful one, you know, when we're feeling calm and in place, it is just a little bit easier for us to kind of sit there and like talk about things and kind of like think through our thoughts. But when we're trying to like get into the moment, it's definitely harder to verbalize what you're doing while you're doing it. So you're kind of just in that moment going with it. doesn't mean we can't make mistakes and still come back and fix them later. And there is my angry orange. And here are my two orange drawings, both my calm, peaceful one and my much more aggressive, energetic, kind of angry one. Um, hopefully this shows that, you know, even when we're drawing an object that does not necessarily have an inherent emotion to it, we can still convey a mood or feeling through the way that we use our mark making techniques. Have a good day.